What just happened? No, really, don't think of a white bear. You can't help it, right? When somebody says, don't think of a white bear, what comes to mind? A white bear, oh, I wasn't supposed to think of that. Stop. When somebody shows you a picture of a white bear, what happens? Your associations with white bears come to mind. Social psychologists use that trick to illustrate something called automatic irrepressible cognition. We call it a prime. So when we show you a white bear, or a brand, or a package, or a product, or expose you to an advertising, we're priming you. The associations that you have with those stimuli automatically come to mind. You can't stop them from coming to mind. They come to mind and then maybe you try to repress them, but they've already come to mind. That is system one processing. It's associative in nature. Your associations with stimulus are automatically activated. It happens automatically without your control. The same is true when we show your brand. Let's do Coca-Cola, we are in Atlanta. Love Pepsi, but let's do Coca-Cola. <laughs> if we show you the Coca-Cola brand, just like white, a white bear, your associations with that brand are activated. So when you see Coca-Cola, what do you think of? Maybe global, maybe happiness, that's certainly perceived perception of that brand. Refreshing might be an attribute that you think of that brand. Calories, maybe on the negative side. These associations aren't always positive. But those associations that you have either move you toward or away from whatever that stimulus is. If they're positive, I'm moving toward on average. If they're negative, I'm moving away on average. We've known this in marketing for years, that we want our attributes to be top of mind, but now we actually have a vocabulary for talking about it. There is a neural basis for top of mind, and it is the accessibility of these attributes when, they're, when you're exposed to a representation, in this case, of that brand. So how can we measure those automatic associations? Here's an example of a non-implicit technique. We call this fast, Im fast explicit technique. Let's say um, I'm gonna measure your response time and I am going to ask you, I'm gonna show you logos on the screen and I want you to swipe towards yourself if you like the brand and I'm gonna ask you to swipe away from yourself if you dislike the brand. And I'm gonna time you to see how long it takes you to make that judgment. I'm just trying to measure an affinity. So as you can see there, Coca-Cola appears on the screen. I swipe it. I measure your response time. What do I have there? I have an indirect measure, right, because it's a, a response latency. But does it meet the other criteria? I'm asking you to make an explicit judgment. It's intentional and it's controllable. You can modify your answer. And you have to access system two thinking you have to say to yourself, do I like Coca-Cola? And then you have to swipe. That is system two thinking. It's if then. It's propositional. Even if I limit your response to less than one second, you still have to access system two thinking to make that answer. It's intentional and it's controllable. But the point here is that's very valuable. It's actually a good technique and we'll show how predictive it is. But it's not implicit. In implicit techniques, we need the judgment to be separate from the brand prime. So I might show you a logo on the screen like Coca-Cola and then ask you to engage in a separate judgment task. Emotions are going to appear on the screen. If they are negative, swipe them away. If they are positive, swipe them toward yourself. The brand appears on the screen for half a second. It's a prime. Just like the white bear, you can't stop your associations from becoming active. They influence your ability to make the subsequent judgment. If they're consistent with that judgment, you can make it faster. If they're inconsistent, it creates cognitive dissonance and you're slower and you make more errors. So Coca-Cola, is this emotion negative or positive? It's negative. If I love Coke, that's harder for me to do after seeing the Coke logo. That is indirect, uncontrollable, and an unintentional evaluation. I'm not asking you to tell me how you feel about Coke. I'm measuring how you feel about Coke by priming you and putting you in a separate judgment task. 